Well, I mean, you didn't actually get it. Okay, well, we're going to get started soon. Sure. Nice meeting you, everybody. Um, well, my name is Julio Marquez. You can call me Julio, of course. I, uh, been involved with Analysis Exchange for several years now. I've become, I've become a good friend of Paul's. Um, for a living, however, I work in a private equity firm here in New York. It's called the Global Emerging Markets Group. We affectionately know it as GEM. And um, GEM does private equity all over the world. We have several offices. We are here in New York, where we oversee Latin America, the United States, and Canada. Uh, we also have an office in, in uh, Hong Kong. We have an office in uh, Mumbai. We have an office in Bahrain. Another one in Kiev. Another one in Paris, London. I think that's it, Mexico City, Colombia, Bogota. We just opened Sao Paulo. We manage around $3 billion of funds, and it's been a process. It, the, the firm started in 1991 in London. Our president and chairman uh, was a guy who used to work for American Express in London. And uh, in London, American Express has always been more of a private banking institution than a, than a credit card company. Although these days now, everybody, everybody's a bank. They gave, you know how last year they just started giving out banking licenses to everybody. So Goldman, and everybody became a bank so they could get money from you and me. Um, <laughs> and so American Express was uh, kind of like a private bank. Uh, and our chairman was the treasurer of American Express in London. And so he knew a lot of banks and convinced <laughs> them to give them, to give them money to form a fund so that he could then go and spend it in the emerging markets, which were all the, all the rage in the early 90s uh, emerging markets. So he got people like Banque Nationale de Paris and Deutsche Bank and others to just give him money. Uh, formed the first fund, uh, started investing in 1993, raised 200 million pounds sterling. Then he sold that fund in 97, but by then he had, he had uh, raised a second one and a third one, and we're, we've raised nine funds now in our, in our uh, history. Um, and uh, what we do now, as opposed to what we did then, what we do now is we look at private equity, we look at companies all over the world, uh, and try to identify companies that are cheap, or that are good value, or that have some sort of a turnaround potential, or something. And uh, we buy them. We either buy 100% of them or we buy stakes in them. And together with a management team or together with partners, we will then seek to put some capital to work in the company, uh, make it better in some way. And after a few years, hopefully sell it for more than what we bought it. That's private equity in, in a nutshell. Uh, At GEM, we're kind of specialists in looking for value. Uh, we, we have 40 odd companies right now in our portfolio uh, all over the world. We go from owning uh, a fertilizer company in Jordan. I always use a fertilizer company as one of the extreme examples, right? I'm gonna try to give you extreme examples. We owe everything from a fertilizer company in Jordan to a uh, oil company in Libya to a Burger King franchise in Michigan, which now is the biggest emerging market in the world, uh, the United States. And <laughs> the state of Michigan is one of the most depressed, you know, economies in, in the world. Um, so that's definitely, uh, you know, on the on the on the edge. Uh, but we also own uh, Elite Model Management, which is a modeling company, a modeling agency. In the, in the, you know, they're based in Switzerland. Um, <clears throat> to a retailer in Latin America, you know, to just so we look for all kinds of industries, all kinds of companies. Now today, uh, Paul asked me to come talk to you about capitalization tables, just because it's an interesting topic to know about 
to know the lingo of. Um, as you know, in most things, if you know the lingo, you're already halfway there. So we'll do a lot of lingo um, in connection with capitalization tables. Um, it is something that employers, prospective employers, people in the industry always ask, well, what do you, do you know about capitalization tables? People think uh, it's kind of difficult, but really it's not. Um, I understand you guys have things like degrees and MBAs and knowledge of, of uh, numbers and math and, and business, and so I don't think this is a, a difficult topic at all. But it does get some people um, you know, concerned, and um, you always should just be able to answer the question, yeah, of course, capitalization tables, that. Um, so let's go over what, what capitalization tables are. Um, <coughs> this, is, uh, this is the agenda. Uh, it's, uh, it's a long, you know, it's gonna be a while, so we'll try to have a break there somewhere in the middle. It's 1.30. Uh, it, this also comes with an Excel file that I prepared. Um, we'll get into that later. The first subject that we're going to discuss is dilution, because that's all that's what capitalization tables are all about. Now, the capitalization table is a piece of paper where everybody, all of the shareholders of a company, and all of the people who might become shareholders of a company are listed, and that's your capitalization table. If you form a company with your friend and you each own fifty percent of the shares, that's your capitalization table right there. Two shareholders, fifty percent each. That's the easiest capitalization table I can think of. And of course, you've got companies all over the world with millions of shareholders and millions of different kinds of shareholders, and they, all, they each own a piece of some type. That would be the, a capitalization table for IBM. So that, that's, the, that's, what the, that's what the discussion is about. And dilution is the main topic of capitalization tables, because as companies grow, people in the company get diluted. That's almost uh, that's a fact of life. It almost uh, cannot be helped. Um, then we're gonna go. Oops. Then uh, the agenda includes what I call round one, round two, like chapter one, chapter two, because in finance you keep doing rounds of of financing. You keep raising money, and then every time you raise money, that's a new round. So I call the chapters rounds. And we're gonna follow a company uh, all the way to the to the exit. Uh, so dilution, uh, there's two types of dilution. There's percentage dilution, where the percentage of the company decreases, and there is the, a share price or economic dilution where your value in the company decreases. They're not quite the same thing. Uh, when you choose to be a high growth company with outside investors, <coughs> you are embarking on a path of percentage dilution, hopefully with increasing economic value after every round. Um, it's always okay to accept percentage dilution as well as you're maximizing your economic value growth. Um, we'll go to the next next few pages, but as you can see, that's that's the basic story, right? It's the old uh, you want to be you want you want to have a smaller piece of a larger pie 